Hi everyone, this is Andrew Tyne. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be looking at sideloading unsigned apps onto the M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So I'm going to be listing detailed instructions on how to do this in the description. And I'm going to be following this particular tutorial, which I'll be linking in the description and showing you how to install the AppDB Rick Pector onto your M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So I'm recording this on my M1 MacBook Air 2020, and uh, hopefully you'll be able to follow on the instructions with me. The first step we have to do is to link our Mac to app tb so i'm going to click on this link and then i'm going to link my email address then we're going to download the link to app db application i've opened my downloads folder and we're just going to double click on this mobile config and we're going to review the installation here and then we're going to open system preferences and click on profiles and then we're going to allow this to install So now this computer can be managed by the AppDB store. So we have to wait for some time for this um, device to be linked, but once it's linked, what we can now do is go back to the instructions and then we can click on this green link here to download Rook Pacto for free. I'm just gonna download that and install this. So I'm gonna double click on Rook Pacto here, and then we're going to open up this file. I'm gonna move this into the applications folder. and then we're going to run it now. So it's asking us here to enable revocation protection. So I'll click enable. So it's saying here we need to enable revocation protection and it's copied a terminal command, which I'm going to paste here. Enter my password now to enable this, and we're going to cl close this to enable revocation protection. So, here I'm going to download PPSSPP for iOS, and this is not available on the Mac App Store or the iOS App Store to be downloaded onto this computer. And obviously, we can't sideload it, it's not associated with the same Apple ID. So, I'm just going to download this IPA file here. So I'm going to take this IPA file and then I'm going to upload this PPSSPP IPA file. So once that's installed onto the custom applications on my app store, then we can now actually do an installation. So I'm installing this PPSSPP through here. So we're just going to install via Rick Pactor here. And then I can click on the Rick Pactor section here and it's doing a download and installing for us now. And now the PPSSPP has automatically loaded and it's saying here that we might need to allow this to launch in settings, but it's appeared to have launched already for us. So if I go to my security setting, it hasn't given us an, a gatekeeper error, but uh, this is now working. So we can now run the iOS version of PPSSPP and it does a full screen and it looks like the kind of iPad aspect ratio, which is not ideal, but um, we'll manage. So what we need to do now is to add games onto the PPSSPP emulator. So you normally do this through iTunes by right, using the application sharing function, but obviously we can't do that because we're on an M1 Apple Silicon Mac. So I um, need to navigate to this library containers folder. So we just go to finder, go to go, hold down the option key, click on library, and then we're going to find this particular folder. So we've got the containers section here, and then we need to follow this code. So F, 2a and this one we just created so double click on this double click on data and this has got sim links to various parts of the computer so what i'm going to do is pop this here because this is where the files are so i'm going to put my psp folder in here and we're just going to see if that picks it up here so we've got psp there and here we've got uh, god of war so right now I've got my Xbox wireless controller attached. 
So um, I'm going to be controlling this by controller. I'm just going to show you the settings I'm using right now. So the most important thing is that we go to the developer tools section and then we turn on the CPU core to interpreter rather than direct JIT because otherwise the games won't load. Um, and then the other thing is that we should just tweak the graphics a little bit. So I just normally enable frame skipping one and um, I just make sure that the rendering resolution is uh, one times. Um, for other games, you can probably increase this to three times or even more. I'm just gonna load up Ghost of Sparta. The sounds you hear now are just coming out of my MacBook speakers. You know, as you can see, this game sort of works. It's doing a super low frame rate, but you know, this is a good sign because it's like one of the most demanding games on, on the PSP. And um, it's, it's good that it's running at all. So recently I loaded up footage of GTA San Andreas running through parallels on the Windows version of the game and it ran around 20-30 frames per second so it wasn't a particularly good experience. If you click on view device data you can actually get that to install directly onto your Rick Pector. So if you have Rick Pector open and then you click this link then it will load onto your Rick Pector here and I'm just downloading the game now. So here I'm just going to enable this and I'm going to skip the social club and I've got San Andreas working here. So I'm just going to full screen this, just demo this working. So I'm just playing around with this Grand Theft Auto San Andreas and I can really tell that it's running much better than the Windows version of the game, running through parallels. I've just uploaded a video of that and it's running about 20, 30 frames per second. And you know, that's quite impressive because it's a Windows game, but this one is much more native feeling and um, much more responsive. So I'm quite, it's quite interesting to see that this is working so well. Anyway, I hope you found this tutorial useful. Uh, I think that this particular method is quite an interesting method to load unsigned apps. It means that if Apple ever actually decides to fully and permanently block the side loading of apps using iMazing, then there are other methods that we can use to load these games and applications. These will all continue to work no matter what Apple decides to do server side. So anyway, I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.